Okay, these creatures are small, but they are still a threat. Now, earlier this summer, me and Emily Din here with the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, we warned you about the risks of a tick bite, but today we are still warning you of the risks of a tick bite towards the end of summer. And why are we telling people about this? Right, so right now is a low time for ticks, but ticks can be active again in the fall beginning about September, anytime the weather is above 40 degrees. So sometimes they can go even into the winter. Yeah, how mild it is. Yeah, exactly. And so we want that cold to kind of push them away, but the heat is still here and so are the ticks. Right. And one of the unique things about ticks and a specific one, the Lone Star Tick can give people a red meat allergy. Right. And so that hasn't officially been established yet, but that seems to be the link when it comes to alpha gal syndrome or the official name for red meat allergy. And so there seems to be evidence of tick bites, especially from the Lone Star Tick, connected to um, alpha gal syndrome. But that hasn't been ruled, that has not ruled out other tick species or even other uh, biting insects. Yeah, so this red meat allergy within the Lone Star Tick is still so new that people like you, Emily, who are researchers, are still trying to figure out what those symptoms are like. Right, and so it's an allergic reaction. It's not like Lyme disease that's a bacteria transmitted by a tick. And so it's like an allergic reaction that's consistently inconsistent. It's very interesting kind of food allergy or um, even to allergies containing the sugar molecule alpha-gal and that can be found in things like cows, sheep, goats, rabbits, deer, um, other like non-primate mammals can contain alpha-gal which can make people sensitive to that especially if they've been bitten by ticks before in the past. So this is complex and challenging right. to regularly figure out, but right. what are those other diseases that people really need to watch out for when bitten by a tick? Lyme disease is the first yeah. big one. So into the fall, most of the, the most common tick people will encounter is the black-legged tick. If I can show Yeah, let's camera. show people. You have a great little right. resource right yes. here. Yes, and so I'll segue into that, but this is our tick ID card. And you're seeing just how small yeah, they are. Yeah, so the most common tick people will find in the fall is the black-legged tick. And sometimes it can be even smaller than the point of this pen. Yeah. And so just to go to show, it's not necessarily about seeing the tick on you. It's about avoiding the tick bites as much as you can, whether that be like wearing long clothes or long pants, long sleeves, protecting yourself with repellent. And that could be repellent applied to the skin or a longer term um, repellent that's called permethrin that's only applied to your clothes and gear. Yeah. And so that may be a good option for people like backpackers, hunters, so on, who know that they're gonna wear a set of clothes for a long period of time, and that permethrin can last several washes, too. Jeez, well, yeah, there is so much. Yeah. <laughs> there are so many tactics and so many things to learn about ticks, but Emily, thank you so much for joining MidMichigan Matters today, again, for sharing <laughs> how we can prevent ticks from getting us, and you do not want any of those diseases. Yes.